everyone, my name is Eden Full, and today I want to talk to you about my journey of how I developed the technology, how it failed, and how I was able to redesign it and make it into something actually valuable. So first, I want to tell you that solar panels should rotate. If for some of you who might have actually seen the demonstration outside at the salon, um, I've mounted a solar panel on a rotating frame. And this actually allows it to follow the sun, so it'll give up to 40% more electricity. But there's a big problem these days where a lot of the solar panels that we know aren't following the sun, right? They're just sitting there flat on a roof or on the ground or on some sort of platform. And that's silly because there's so much wasted potential there. And what I developed is a device that's really easy to put together. Some of you might have seen it outside. It's um, a couple of pieces of wood, um, a metal aluminum clock that's really easy to calibrate, and you just clip the solar panel inside the frame. Um, and it's able to move using clean water. Um, and how this works is the water will flow through the system, and I'll explain a little bit more about that in a bit. But um, my journey with solar panels started when I was really little. I remember tinkering around and being really frustrated that I was trying to charge this solar car to go all the way to the other end of my house. And um, I had this problem where the, the solar car would just kind of halfway get there. And I thought, well, I'm looking on the back of the solar panel. That's really weird. It's supposed to give me more electricity than this. And so I thought to myself, well, maybe it's because it's not getting enough exposure to electricity. And I think it was really taking the time to experiment and try different ideas and you know, uh, you know, face the solar panel at different angles that really led me to, to understand that, oh, well, that makes sense. You need to point it directly at the sun for it to work. And if there's one lesson that I've learned, it's that I should st start early on any project. And I encourage you to as well. If there's anything you're even remotely curious about, remotely frustrated about, Think about how you can actually turn that into a project. So I begged my dad to take me to Home Depot, and I bought all these supplies. And over the years, I got better and better at prototyping until I got to this point where th this thing actually worked. This was a solar tracker. I would put it outside in my backyard, and yeah, it would rotate. And so I, I felt really good about this device I developed. The original design was that I would use these pieces of metal that were welded together. And because they had two different um, properties for how they expand under heat, then it would cause the solar panel to kind of displace um, you know, as, it moved, uh, as the sun moved across the sky. And it sounds complicated, and I'll tell you in a bit why this ultimately ended up not working. But at the time, I was 16, 17 years old, and I was like, oh, I'm awesome. <laughs> And um, you know, I thought this was a way better design than that, you know, which is what you find when you Google solar tracker on the internet. Even now, 10 years later, there's this, this complexity with the technology that doesn't need to be that complex, right? It's a device that rotates solar panels. That's all you need. And so I, st I, I started showcasing this technology at science fairs as a kid. And one girl actually came up to me, and she was from Indonesia, and she was like, you know what? You should try deploying this in the developing world. And I feel like a light bulb went off in my head. So I realized that if there's a, if there's a simpler technology that I've developed here, well, then that must mean that there are people out there who may not have the same educational background as me, who might not also have engineering degrees, and I didn't have one either, who might be able to relate to what I just built and be able to find it useful. So I thought of ways that I could implement this technology out there. I applied for a lot of grants. I applied for like 60 grants or something like that. I just went on Google and I Googled like, you know, solar, alternative energy, youth invention grants, stuff like that. And I applied to like 60 of these things. And um, I, 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 I couldn't get anyone to give me a grant because I didn't have an existing project. And I was also, you know, 17 years old at the time. And I, you know, I didn't have like a formal nonprofit or anything set up. It was just me. So um, at the time, no one gave me a grant except for uh, someone at Princeton University where I ended up going to college. Uh, a professor decided that he would take a chance on me and he sponsored my proposal. And so I ended up having a chance to go to Kenya 
where uh, it's right on the equator, so you get a lot of sunlight, it's really direct, and um, it's really easy to get good data. As you can see, I got some guys to do heavy lifting for me, which was really nice. Um, and I worked with the, the villagers to really make sure that this was something they could understand. And so we put the whole thing together. I had a chance to actually deploy this in the field, and it was, it was really awesome. But um, I want to tell you a story. Uh, I, had, I met a woman in the village. She showed me that she had three solar lanterns, one for her kids to study at night, one for her husband, just because you have to give one to your husband, and one for herself. And she told me how uh, sometimes the third lantern wouldn't charge all the way, and sometimes it wouldn't charge at all. So there, there again, we have the same problem. This solar panel that claims to be able to charge three devices is only really charging two, two and a half, maybe. And I was like, oh, well, this is an easy problem. Allow me to help you um, fix this problem. I'm going to go build you a sun saluter. So I go into town, I uh, come back a couple days later after I get all my supplies, and I look for her. And I'm unable to find her, so I ask her neighbor, uh, you know, where'd she go? And her neighbor was like, uh, she actually got trampled by a buffalo because she wandered out into the wilderness to find firewood. And I think this was a really critical moment for me because up until this point, it was a personal interest. It was, I really liked solar panels as a kid. I built things for me. I built things for fun. And I didn't realize that something I was building could affect other people. And so I decided that I would take some time off of school. I, I stopped out of college for two years to work on the Sun Saluter full time. We've actually built out the team to three people now, and uh, we're rapidly expanding into India next year. Um, but. All of this happened because I committed to this project 100%. I devoted all of my time to it, and I didn't do other things. And now we've gotten it to a point where I can actually go back to college. So I'm a junior studying mechanical engineering. <laughs> but I want to talk to you about this, this design that I deployed. I was so confident about it, right? I thought that I had found this grand solution. And I came up with it by myself in my basement. And so I, I got there, right? I deployed this system. And you know what people told me? They were like, it's really nice you're trying to help us, but we don't understand this. It, it, it doesn't look like it really works. And I'm, I'm just really confused. And I, you know, this was a, it, this was a hit to my ego. Um, and this was really really upsetting because I, I didn't understand what I was doing wrong. I thought I understood this problem, this, this solar panel problem. What, what, what's going on? And so I started thinking, well, I'm expecting them to just have this technology that I've brought to them and just to magically use it. I'm making so many assumptions about these people. I don't know enough about them, and I need to understand their lives more. So I started thinking. What are ways that I can develop a solar tracker that would work? Um, and so I realized that, actually, they collect water in these jerry cans. They wake up at like 5 in the morning, they collect water, and then they just let the water sit in their, you know, in their house all day, and it doesn't do anything. And I started thinking to myself, what if there's a way that I can integrate this into the actual system? And so the big lesson that I learned here is that I need to ask other people for feedback and I need to push them for that feedback. It's not just going to come. The answer is just not going to come to me naturally. I have to go out there and take that initiative. And so a lot of this, the areas that lack electricity also lack clean water. So I started thinking that maybe I'm actually onto something this time. There are three million solar panels that have been deployed in the developing world right now. And I thought to myself, if I can make this design simpler, maybe we can deploy three million sun saluters as well. And as there are more solar panels being deployed, maybe by 2020, we can have 3 million sun saluter, 30 million sun saluters out there as well. And so this would also help to tackle this big problem where a lot of people struggle with waterborne diseases that they're, they're unable to understand that you need to have clean water because it's hard to see those long-term changes. What if there's a way that we can tie solar and water together, all of these needs that they need to charge radios and lanterns and cell phones, 
and we can put that all into one device. And so in the morning, you collect four liters of water, you attach it to one side of the solar panel, and you attach the counterweight on the other side. And you adjust the water flow so that it matches the rate at which the sun moves across the sky. The water is put into a receiving container, and then at the end of the day, over, um, over time, it'll follow the sun just like a, a regular solar tracker would. And at the end of the day, you get up to 40% more electricity and four liters of clean water. And so this new design, when we deployed it, pe the reaction from people was really different. People started being like, oh, I get it. I get it immediately. The design is so intuitive. You use water. It, it makes sense. And if you go check out our um, display at the salon, you'll see that for yourself. But I really wanted to cl conclude and tell you that you know, you're not going to get designs right the first time. Most of your ideas are probably not going to work the first time. And it's important to let go of your ego and understand that progress can be made by asking for feedback, by really making sure that you're addressing others' core needs and really following that passion. And so I strongly encourage you to go forth with that same open-mindedness and tackle your own initiatives. Thank you so much.